What's going on, guys? It's Uche and Joku Sneaker Principal, and I'm here with my Leica M11P, and I want to share with you how I set up my camera for my walks. Um, I uh, I love intertwining my overall health as a man of a certain age by taking nice long walks, you know, decompressing, but also uh, distracting my brain by having my camera with me and just making pictures, whether it's people, landscapes, buildings, interesting things that I see from um, step to step, moment to moment. But one thing I do not want to do is put myself in a position where I'm stressing and trying to figure out um, um, uh, aperture and shutter speed and ISO at any given time, especially when I'm outside. I want to be able to just see something and capture that picture, knowing that uh, to the best of my ability, I've captured it as, it's, as it looks to me. And if I have to make some adjustments in Lightroom, I'll do that. But I try my best to minimize that. Um, most of my adjustments on Lightroom is more of an artistic flair that I put to my photographs and less about me trying to fix something that went wrong when I was taking that picture. Most of the time, if something went wrong with that picture, I just delete it. Um, it's, uh, and sometimes when it does go wrong, it actually goes right, if you know what I mean. But um, I just want to show you something really quick. Um, and uh, hopefully this works. I'm using my overhead camera right now to um, kind of share with you and put this over here. Part of the, part of the mess that's my desk. But um, so this is my my um, Leica M11P, and what you see right here is my primary settings. So when I'm so the things that I do off the bat, I would first of all my ISO. Um, the limit that I put in my ISO is 6400. But what I do is typically let me see if I can get that. Okay, so you can see that better. Um, that's 6400 right there. Usually what I do is I leave it at auto. I let the camera make the adjustments outside to what it thinks works best. And then um, <clears throat> then what I do is with my shutter speed, I also put it at auto. And I'll tell you why. Because as I'm walking around, um, I live in New York City. Um, actually, I live in New Rochelle. But I live in, and but I do a lot of walking in the city in in a space that looks pretty much like New York City. So you have a lot of tall buildings, spaces where shadows could pop up on you at any given time. And as a result, I find myself um, having to make adjustments for light. Um, and you see something, you want to capture it, but then you have to look at your adjustments to make that adjustment. It just doesn't really work well. That's why a lot of people opt to use point and shoots when they do street photography. So what I do essentially is I turn my Leica into a point and shoot. Um, I saw that auto, so it makes that ISO adjustments for me. So the, regardless of where the lighting is, it's, it's going to do the best it can to adjust accordingly. Then my shutter speed, again, which has impact on how much light gets into my camera, I set that at auto as well. So the only thing that I definitely adjust myself is my aperture. So whether I go from F2 all the way up to F16, um, because I'm using the, I don't know if you can see that, uh, is it upside down? Yes, it is. This is the, um, and I guess, guys, forgive me. I'm using my GoPro 10 as my overhead camera, but this is the Leica Summicron M. Um, uh, it's an F2 uh, 20 millimeter lens. I love this lens. It's my only lens. I've actually thought about getting another lens, maybe a, a, a 50 or 35, but honestly, there's, there's a thing about this camera, which I'll tell you I'll tell you about shortly, that makes this both, I mean, makes it 28, makes it a 35, and makes it a 50, which I don't, which I don't think a lot of people talk about, which um, is, I think is very important so that you don't have to think you have to get the two other lenses. So um, back to what I was talking about. All I do is I, I adjust my aperture. So, and what I've found, it's funny how a lot of people always think you have to be wide open. And I agree with that, you know, you could do it wide open, but then you have to um, make adjustments um, based on what you're trying to catch. Wide open for me at, at two works if I'm trying to capture someone and get that blurry background. But uh, for me, most of my shots are really at four. You know, I want to get as much as of what I'm seeing in focus. And sometimes I go as high as <laughs> eight and 11 because I might see something that is that something that's happening and the background itself, if I'm in the park or if I'm um, the architecture around me is just so compelling and it's part of the story, then I will go as high as 11, sometimes 16. And where that also comes into play for me is when I'm doing, doing my zone focusing. Um, I do not want this to turn into a zone focusing tutorial because I'm probably going to screw it up. That's for another video. But if I'm 
um, most of the time if I'm doing my zone focusing, I try to stay about eight. And the great thing about eight is that then I set my distance according to how far I'm, I, I think I'm going to be away from my subjects. So eight is my, that eight right there is my, um, that's my, uh, my aperture right there. But then the distance Usually, I, I'm usually about eight to six feet away from from what I'm taking pictures of. Especially if I'm, I'm taking pictures of people, I try to get as close as possible without them knowing I'm, what I'm doing. And sometimes I can go as far as fifteen. But let's say I, let's say I go with eight. So from eight, you know, so check this out. Um, aperture of eight, about eight feet. If you see these numbers on the bottom end, you see eight on this side. You see eight from that side. That's the range in which most of the pictures if you're taking a picture from eight feet at at um uh at an aperture of eight that this should be in focus so we're talking about roughly for that eight somewhere anywhere bef between five feet to infinity no i'm sorry five feet to about let's say maybe 16 17 feet anything within that range will tend to be in focus so the great thing about this when i set my camera unless i'm i'm trying to be eight feet away from from my people or what i'm taking a picture of um, I can just leave it like this and just gauge myself how far I am from my subject and take my picture. And the great thing about that is it takes all the thinking out of it so I can really focus more on, com on composition, moving my feet and trying to determine how close or how far I am from my subject. Um, man, I love this so much. Like this is this is what makes my, my walks, you know, and my um, attempting to capture amazing images make pictures um so much fun um but the great thing about this is by doing this on my leica when i when i grab other cameras um it's funny how i don't think as much anymore this is my um my r6 mach mach 2 um when i turn this bad boy on i pop a lens on there let's say if i throw on my um uh, I, I i i tend to walk around with my 24 to 70 when i put this on there I find myself going fully manual with this. I don't know why. Since I've since I've been using the Leica, when I when I throw on my um my Canon with with uh, any of my Canon lenses, my my, my um, RF lenses, I tend to set my camera automatically into, into into manual because now my brain is saying you're trying to create something the way you like the, the way you like it to look versus the way the camera is telling you you should look. My eyes being trained by Leica, so that now when I'm taking pictures with my with my Canon, um, it's so much more intentional. So I just wanted to share that with you how I set up my Leica um, and capture pictures. Oh yeah, one last I was, I, was, I was telling you about when it comes to um, let me uh, go back to overhead. When it comes to um, why I love my twenty eight my my twenty eight millimeter lens, and I feel like I don't need at least not at this point in time to 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 get a um, take the lens off, to get a uh, um, a th 35 or 50. And again, I might be wrong, but I, listen, this is my opinion. This is my style of taking photographs. So the great thing right now is this, what you're seeing right here on the screen is the camera capturing um, a 28 millimeter, right? I have to set where when I hit this button right here, this, this frame right here, which is a crop of um, 1.3, puts me at about um 35 millimeters that 1.3 times the 1.3 times 28 um let me do the math real quick um i'm a forever teacher so i, I gotta show so 1.3 times 28 puts you at 36 uh, here we go 36 which is essentially 35 millimeters right and that's what what you're seeing here that number right there is 1.3 okay when i hit it again it gives me a 1.8 so that 1.8 right there so let's do this. Uh, 28 times 1.8 gives you a 50.4. So essentially, by crop, by cropping the image, and what this is saying is, it's going to capture what's within this box, which this box here is essentially, you know, a 50, mil, 50 millimeter um, space. This is 35. This is 50. So uh, again, I use that a lot because I might be in a space where I'm trying to capture something and what I'm trying to capture um, is a person and I want to really focus on that person. What ends up happening, I set it I set it for um, for 50 because I want to get close up on them and when I get that image, it's them. And it also takes advantage of the fact that this is a, uh, um, a 60, mil, 60 megapixel camera 
you know, so taking advantage of the, of the pixels as well. So I don't know. It's just like this is the ultimate for me. Um, camera that allows me to keep one lens on here and use this like a specialized paintbrush. They can do a couple of different things. But um, again, I just wanted to share that with you. Hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you all soon. Be well. Peace.